Alright folks, so welcome to the next video, or if you're in sixth period, this will be the first of the videos that you have to watch for class. So, today, okay, this is not the most exciting of material, um, but we're going to get through it the best we can. So, right now we're going to talk about the Latin America colonial, colonial system, and then we're going to get into the, the revolutions that happened in Latin America kind of as a result of the Enlightenment, as a result of the French Revolution and the American Revolution. So, kind of like I just said, the Enlightenment and the American and French Revolutions are going to inspire the revolutions of these Latin American countries. So, obviously, we learned about that colonialism unit where the Europeans come over, okay, they sail in, and they establish, you know, huge colonies where they mine for gold, they mine for food, and they kind of trade and set up all these different things in the New World. Okay, so when we say Latin America, we're referring to basically what we know as South America, which would be this continent here, and then this area, which is kind of like Central America as well. So Central and South America. So, as we just said, Spanish conquistadors, French explorers, even the British will get involved a tiny bit, um, they're going to set up colonies in Latin America. Okay, and these governments will mirror the customs and the ways of the mother country. Okay, so again, that mother country, okay, that is like the home country. So like Spain or France or Britain. And then the colonial, the colony is the area in Latin America that the mother country is kind of supporting. So, Jesuit mi missionaries will firmly establish Catholicism in Latin America. Okay, Catholicism, the main religion, still to this day in the region. Uh, if you know anyone from that area, chances are they either are Catholic or know someone who is. Now, these colonial economies are going to focus on the mining of precious metals, specifically gold, silver, okay, other metals that they can use for industrial production. Again, this is kind of a review from stuff we've already done. So the Spanish will kind of take over Latin America and obviously they're going to bring with them that disease, smallpox, okay, and it's going to lead to the destruction of the Native Americans. Okay, so to fill that void in labor, they're going to bring in Africans, okay, and they're going to use them as slaves, okay, unfortunately. And then these major cities will develop as a result of kind of this colonial uh, economy, this colonial development of Latin America. Okay, Havana, which is in Cuba, Okay, right here, this would be Havana, okay, Mexico City, okay, Lima, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, okay, other countries in South America, okay. So again, Lima, I'm sorry, Buenos Aires here, Sao Paulo here, okay, Lima in Peru right here. So, the Spanish colonial structure, what does society look like? Okay, so, sharp division. Okay, a lot of societies we see have sharp divisions. Okay, at the top are the Peninsulares, or the uh, Viceroys. Okay, these are men who had been born in Spain, but they come over and rule the colony kind of like a king. They control all the wealth, all the power. So again, the people born in Spain, they can come over into this Latin American society and kind of control things. Okay, Creoles, they are 100% Spanish, but they're born in Latin America. So a slight distinction. So in order to be at the true top, Okay, you have to be born in Spain. Okay, if you're still Spanish, but you were born in Latin America, you're kind of down a little bit of a rung, but you still have a lot of power. Okay, and then mestizos and mulatos, these are blends of Spanish and American Indian, uh, Native Americans, and as well as um, Africans. So mestizo, okay, this is a blend of Spanish and Indian, or Native American, and mulatto, that's actually a blend of Spanish and African. Okay, so there is a distinction there that might be important. Okay, and then slaves and Indian, uh, slaves, Indians, Native Americans, obviously at the bottom of the social ladder. Okay, and again, this term Indian, okay, we're using it because that's what the Spanish, you know, would use. But again, probably not the uh, proper term. Okay, quick break in the action here. We're going to talk about the top five... Thanksgiving food items, so we're going to do this quickly. Number five. Okay, there's a picture of ham. Okay, so obviously ham is key. Okay, 
it's underrated. A lot of people think it's just a kind of holiday Christmas thing, but it actually works great on your Thanksgiving plate, specifically next to your mashed potatoes. Okay, next, you got your stuffing. Okay, you can have chicken stuffing, sausage, okay, plain, regular. You can have all sorts. It goes well. Mixes with turkey, mixes with mashed potatoes. It's great. Okay, obviously, got to have your turkey. Okay, this is key for any good Thanksgiving meal. Second place, okay, mashed potatoes. Obviously, these are key. Mix in a little garlic there. Okay, some people like skin, some people don't. I personally don't like the skins of my mashed potatoes, but at any rate, that's number two. And of course, apple pie. So don't be one of these people who kind of is all about the pumpkin pie. Yeah, pumpkin pie is great, but let's be honest. Would you rather have a piece of apple pie or pumpkin pie? The answer is apple pie. Okay, so that's your top five Thanksgiving foods. Moving on to Latin American revolutions. Okay, this is going to be complicated, so strap in. All right, Haiti. Okay, this is a island in the Caribbean. Okay, I'm going to show you exactly where it is. Here's Haiti. Okay, boom. Now, this uh, this island was occupied by the French. Okay, and as part of the um, area known as Hispaniola. Okay, so African slaves are obviously brought in to work on these sugar plantations. A lot of areas in the Caribbean are, you know producing a lot of sugar. Okay, during the French Revolution, 100,000 enslaved Africans are going to revolt against uh, the French, against the masters. And uh, this guy, Toussaint Louverture, um, he's a former slave, and he's going to become their military leader. So this is a slave revolt. Um, it takes place by, you know, in the 1800s, early 1800s, by 1801, he's going to take control of the island and free all the slaves. So a lot of people ask in class, hey, how come the slaves never revolted, or how come slaves never tried to improve their situation. Actually, they did, and here's an example of one that was actually successful. Okay, so French troops are going to come to help, but this Toussaint guy is going to defeat the armies of Spain, France, and Britain, and <coughs> um, he's actually going to agree to end the uprising, kind of end the violence, if the French will promise to end slavery. The French agree. Okay, Napoleon's involved. They later trick him and imprison him. Um, he's actually going to die in imprisonment, and we'll learn more about that in class. But Haiti will declare independence on January 1st, 1804, as a direct result of his actions, um, and they become the first black colony to free itself from European control. So that's the first kind of colony that gains independence. And I know there's going to be a lot of them. It's going to be confusing. So Venezuela, the next one. Okay, they get uh, independence in 1811. Okay, and they're led by an important guy. Okay, his name's Simon Bolivar. Okay, you got to know who he is. Okay, he's going to lead the army for 10 years. And it's going to take a while, he gets exiled, but eventually the key thing we need to know, he gains independence for Venezuela. Okay, <clears throat> quick break. Top five holiday movies. we got to do this quick. Okay, so number five, let's we'll start at the top. Okay, Jingle All the Way. Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's funny, it's awesome. Okay, Elf, number four. Will Ferrell, another funny movie. Okay, The Santa Claus. Tim Allen, okay, he gets fatter, he gets skinnier, it's funny, he grows a beard, he turns into Santa Claus. Hey, my dad is Santa Claus, that's the whole premise of the movie. Okay, great movie. Of course, number two, we're going to go with It's a Wonderful Life. Okay, spelling, might be a little off there. And the number one uh, holiday movie of all time, drum roll please, Die Hard, Bruce Willis. Okay, defending against terrorists on Christmas Eve in Los Angeles. Okay, he gets back together with his ex-wife. Great romance story there. Also some great action and some just holiday cheer for everybody. So that's the top five holiday movies of all time. Moving on to Argentina. Argentina declares independence in 1816. Okay, Spanish forces in Chile and Peru um, continue to pose a threat to Argentina's in independence. But this guy, Jose de San Martin, okay, another guy we need to know is going to join forces with Simon Bolivar to secure independence for Argentina. Okay, so Bolivar kind of had his hand in a lot of different countries, and he's a big kind of hero uh, for many people. He gained independence for Argentina, Venezuela, 
and also uh, some other countries in South America. Okay, Mexico. Okay, Native Americans and mestizos are going to mix more freely, and they're going to play a leading role in the revolutions. Okay, so mestizos, okay, are going to be important. So it's not just the Creoles. Remember, the Creoles were the people that were only Spanish. Okay, now mestizos, mix, mixing of Spanish and native, the native peoples, they're going to play a bigger role. Okay, and this, peop, this guy, uh, Miguel Hidalgo, okay, a priest, he's going to issue a call for rebellion. So he organizes 80,000 men to revolt against the Creoles and the Spanish. So it's kind of like mestizos versus Creoles. Okay, and the Creoles and Spanish fear the loss of their land. They fought back and defeat Hidalgo in 1811. So this is Hidalgo. We're going to talk more about him in class. But you can kind of debate or argue, you know, how priestly were his actions, how genuine were his actions. But, again, that's something we'll talk about in class. Okay. The rebels continue to fight. They choose their leader, Padre Jose Maria Morales. Okay, and he's going to be defeated in 1815. Okay, in 1820, the revolution is still going on. Okay, the Creoles fear they're going to lose their privileges and change their minds. And eventually, Mexico is going to gain independence. Okay, so if you're keeping score at home here, hey, that's like a 10, uh, you know, 10-year, 11-year kind of conflict and Mexico is eventually going to gain independence out of it. So eventually, the Creoles kind of fear that they're going to lose their privileges. There's a lot of violence going on. A more liberal group in Spain means kind of uh, more enlightened, perhaps. Uh, that might be a good word. Just more dedicated to human rights. Kind of, They might see things a little differently than the previous regime. And they're going to go ahead and give Mexico its independence. Now, Brazil. Okay, in 1807, Portugal invades, uh, gets invaded by Napoleon. We're going to talk about this in the next unit. Um, but Portugal's royal family moved to Brazil, continues to rule. Um, in 1815, however, Napoleon gets defeated. The royal family returns to Portugal, but they leave behind this guy, Prince Don Pedro. Okay, so the people of Brazil ask Pedro for independence. He agrees, and Brazil gains independence without any bloodshed. So kind of like that glorious revolution in England where it's a revolution without any bloodshed. So good for Brazil. Okay, and then the last point here. Bolivar um, is going to free a lot of countries uh, in addition to help from Jose San Martin. And together they're going to free Chile, Peru, Panama, and Ecuador. Okay, all Spanish colonies become independent after this battle of Ayacucho in Peru. And Bolivar gets credit for liberating all of these areas. So again, if there's one thing you need to remember, Simon Bolivar, important guy as far as liberating Latin America. So that's it for the video. Um, it is a complicated one, but just make sure you know uh, the big uh, big names: Bolivar, Hidalgo, okay, um, and then also the details of the Haitian Revolution. So it's complicated, but it's just one of those things we gotta know. So again, not the most scintillating material, but uh, we'll go ahead and do it. So, thanks for watching.